It is time to assemble it, then install the receiver, and then finally bind to my Radio Master TX16S. I'm not going to follow the exact instructions or the sequence of the instructions in the manual. What I'm planning to do is install the control horns on control surfaces first, and then put on the horizontal vertical stabilizers, and then install the receiver and connect to all the all the wires and center all the servos before installing the servo arms on the servos because on the wings the servos are kind of hidden buried and I just don't want to do it one more, more than once as you can see they have been already installed and uh, it's, it's going to be difficult to reach with a screwdriver to tighten these. So I just want to do it right the first time after centering everything, adjusting, and then I'm going to screw the servo arms. And as, as for the receiver, I am using this Lemon RX DSMP six channel receiver. The number on it is LM0021S. Now I'm going to speed up the video and only slow it down when I have something important to say. Let's get started. The channels have been nicely labeled on both sides so it's very easy what I need to do now is pull these connectors to the towards the front so there is no, no wire sticking out so I'm just going to do that now connect the vertical and horizontal stabilizers and the horns are already there and then I'm just going to install the, the receiver so I can test the directions of the servos. I will also probably put the servo arms on them without the screw so that I can just see which way they are moving. One thing I would like to point out is once you screw in the horizontal stabilizer to the tip of the vertical stabilizer, you won't be able to get the servo arm in. There's no space, so what I have to do is now uh, don't screw all the way in, just leave left it a little loose. So once I connect everything and then center the servo servos, then I'm going to install the servo arm. And there's a hole coming through this plastic piece in order to be able to tighten that little screw here. So I'm going to do that and then connect the servo rod to the control horn and then tighten these screws. So on this Lemon RX receiver, the connectors go like this. This is the, if you hold it like this towards you, the leftmost one is the bind, then throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gears, and auxiliary. So it's six channels and the, the left hand side, this is the bind. The and in terms of the wiring, if you look at it like this, the bottom wire is the ground wire, which is the black wire goes in there. And the middle is the five volt rail and the top is the signal. I have connected all the servo wires as well as the bind plug onto the receiver. So I'm not going to connect the the wings, I'm just going to bind this to my TX16S. Once I bind it, I'm going to make sure that these servos are centered and then I'm going to install the servo arms. And also I will make another video on how to bind the Lemon RX receiver to the Radio Master TX16S and I will put the link down in the description section.
The receiver is all set up and I removed the bind plug. So um, the rudder and elevator servos are centered. Now I can put on the servo arms. Connections for the rudder and elevator are all done, the linkages. And fortunately they are working on the right direction. So this is up elevator, down elevator, right rudder, left rudder. And they are moving smoothly and without binding or anything. Everything seems to be good. So I'm just going to move on to the ailerons and the, the flaps. Now all the controls are working correctly. Aileron, correct direction. Here on the SA switch is. Flaps not connected right now, because I'm using an extension. Rudder, elevator. The motor. Just to show you the flaps as well, I'm just going to switch this extension cable. The other channel. connected to the flaps so it's the retracted position first down second down everything is working great I'm just going to put everything together clean it up a little bit and put the larger battery in put the propeller the wing tips everything assembled and then it will be ready to for flight hopefully tomorrow Well, it is almost finished. I just need to put on the wing tips. I'm going to use clear Gorilla Glue. This does not foam up and make that uh, yellowish color like the original one. 
I like it. But what I have to do first is sand this painted sections to expose the foam so it has a good bond with the foam on the other side so it stays on, doesn't fall off. And after that, I'm just going to put the wings onto the fuselage, connect everything, and put the battery in, charge it up, check all the surfaces, control surfaces, and also the CG. One thing I really liked about this model is that they put the CG over here. So there is, it says, let me rotate it so you can see it actually. What it says here is CG and there is this little dimple that you can just feel very easily with your fingers. So this is going to make checking CG so much easier. So I would like to quickly point out two things. First of all, when I was gluing the wing tips, I used some masking tape to hold it in place while it's curing. So if you don't want to peel off the paint, don't use masking tape or any tape that's strong enough to do that. Uh, I don't know how else I could have done it. Probably I could have uh, just hold, held it in place by hand until it, it was sticking well, or just used uh, five minute epoxy glue. That would have worked as well. So with the Gorilla Glue, it needs to be on. It doesn't, it doesn't get tacky right away. So I had to put the tape on. Anyway, it's just, it's just a boo-boo, nothing functional. And the other thing is make sure labeling your flap and aileron servo leads because um, it, it, it otherwise gets very difficult to figure out which one is which. And this is very difficult to tuck in. So there's no space, once this goes in, uh, there's not, not going to be, ha be any space for these to go in the wing. So you have to push these in while you're pushing the, the wings. And this is something that's going to be a little uh, frustrating on the field where I don't have a table. And I'll be doing it probably on the ground, but um, what I did with the other one wing was uh, just using a screwdriver to pull the wires in from here. Uh, what I should probably use is instead like a bent wire, probably from a hanger, hanger wire, and then just pull them that way instead of uh, prying with the screwdriver. So now I need to get all this one in and push the wing all the way in. So there is a plastic tab underneath that needs to click here. It is underneath here. So let me try to rotate it and show it to you. And that needs to click in and it's super, so this one, you see that large tab at the end, the left hand side? That's uh, super stiff, so you really have to push it. I don't know if you have seen me like using my body as leverage to push it in, so hopefully it will get a little easier with uh, putting in and out. Here's my first issue with this airplane. So this canopy, glass canopy on top is so tight. I was trying to put all these four clips in and I was pulling and this, this cracked, you can see. It's not in the end of the world, but they should have made it a little better maybe with magnets. I don't like these tabs going in and it is super stiff. Once you put the pilot in, it just stretches too much. And right now it's cracked and I don't know if it's going to hold. I was just trying to take this off. I unbuttoned this side and that, and then I was trying to pull gently. I, I was not being ham-fisted. I was trying to pull gently. As you can see, this side cracked as well. Uh, this material is not good at all and the quality of this is terrible. I mean, 
On the first one, the, we, before, before even flying it, I already broke it in two places. So I have to epoxy it tonight, so it will hopefully cure tomorrow morning. But this is this is not good. This is not a good system, hatching system. They should have put magnets. There are much better systems these days. And putting these like really stiff plastic on, on four tabs is just asking for trouble. So, so far, I'm not very happy with some of the quality of this airplane. But more to come, hopefully it will be a nice flyer. Then I can ignore the, these kind of uh, minor issues. Other than that, it's a huge airplane. So this is the biggest airplane I had so far. And everything seems to be working. They already programmed the brake. So when I let go, it, does, it just immediately stops so that when the airstream is coming, these two halves of the propeller will fold back, creating more streamlined, rest resistant profile. All right, I think this is it. I hope you enjoy this video and tomorrow I'll be flying it and hopefully it will be a successful maiden flight. Well, so please stay tuned. That part will be coming right after this. Stay safe and healthy. See you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.